Bauxite mining moratorium may be extended. Police seek foreign aid to help trace missing fishermen. Good afternoon, I'm Cynthia Arthur. You're watching News on 2. The moratorium period for bauxite mining activities in Pahang, which was scheduled to end on December 31st, may be extended due to industry players' lack of cooperation in interest in managing bauxite stockpiles in the mining areas. According to Natural Resources and Environment Minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi Tuan Kujafar, it was believed that bauxite mining activities are still being conducted despite the moratorium period being enforced. Jadi dengan keadaan demikian, banyak fakta-fakta yang uh, tidak boleh saya uh, dedahkan oleh kerana menjejaskan uh, penyiasatan yang telah dibuat oleh pihak SPRM. Tetapi kenyataannya mengikut uh, apa yang telah kita diketahui sekat-sekat ini ialah mining ini dilakukan pada waktu malam. On Wednesday, 10 civil servants were arrested on suspicion of receiving bribes to protect illegal bauxite mining activities around Kuantan. Kuantan Court had placed all 10 suspects, which included nine Pahang land and mine office staff and one customs senior officer under a seven-day remand. The police, PDRM, through Wisma Putra may seek foreign aid from neighboring countries such as Thailand, Vietnam and Indonesia to help trace the three Dungun fishermen who are still missing at sea. Tenggano Police Chief Dato Aidi Ismail, however, said before the PDRM seeks foreign aid, they will first request for the assistance from other districts and states. The SAR operation, which involves 112 personnel from various agencies, so far has utilized five boats covering a search area from Kuala Dungun to Paka. The PDRM Air Unit is also involved in the operation. On Wednesday, four fishermen went missing while another managed to swim to safety after their fiberglass boat overturned and capsized after it was hit by strong waves near the Kuala Dungun jetty. Search and rescue teams have only managed to find one of the victims, Muhammad Nazri Yaqub, 37, since the SAR operation was launched on the same day. Two people were killed while 11 others were injured in six-vehicle collision on the Besraya Highway near the Serdang KTM commuter station at around 6.30 p.m. last night. The accident involved a cement mixer lorry, Honda HRV, Proton Saga, Nissan Sentra, Kia Pregio and a motorcycle. According to Selangor Fire and Rescue Department Assistant Director Operations, Muhammad Sani Harul, the crash is believed to have been caused by the lorry that had lost control and swerved into the opposite lane. Only one of the victims was killed at the scene, which has been identified as Shafi 31, while the other was a man in his 50s. The case is being investigated under Section 41 of the Road Transport Act 1987. Some 100 of the remaining Malaysian Hajj pilgrims whose journey was delayed due to visa issues will depart for the Holy Land in stages. Tabung Haji Chairman Dato Sri Aziz Abdul Rahim said Tabung Haji is working around the clock to ensure that all the pilgrims will get to perform their Hajj this year. Dato Sri Aziz added that Tabung Haji is in constant contact with the pilgrims affected by the delay to remind them to be prepared to board any flight to Saudi Arabia. So, walaupun dah visa dapat, saya tak boleh hantar orang tu sebab penerbangan ni adalah untuk KT15 kata. Saya tak boleh hantar orang yang KT13 tadi. Bila KT15 ni ada orang tak ada, baru saya boleh letak. Yang penting, saya akan selesaikan semua. Tabung Haji sedang berusaha bekerja siang dan malam. Dan ini bukan salah Tabung Haji. Ini adalah perundangan yang harus kita hormat. The last flight is scheduled to depart on August 26. Chief Justice Tan Sri Mat Raul Sharif has defended his reappointment as the country's top judge, questioning why he should decline the position. He said although the move was unprecedented, everything was done according to due process of law, where the Yang Di Pertuan Agong has the power to...
to appoint judges under the federal constitution. So they went through the process, you know. Uh, there was this uh, uh, advice by the former CJ Tonarifin to the young Tonagong to appoint the exceptional judges. And it was consented by the young Tonagong. Then we became exceptional judges. And then the, with that, you know, under the constitution, the power to appoint judges is with the young Tonagong and the vice prime minister. And the Prime Minister, before tending advice, uh, get recommendation by, from the JAC, which was done in this case. So then he referred to the Yamta Agung of our appointment. And then the Agung referred to the Algeria Raja. Speaking at the Palace of Justice yesterday, Tan Sri Mat Raus was referring to the controversial extension of his tenure as Chief Justice, as well as that of Tan Sri Zulkifli Ahmad Makinudin as Court of Appeal President by the government last month. This was by way of appointing them as additional judges of the federal court after reaching the mandatory retirement age of 66. The Malaysian Bar announced on Thursday that it will file a suit to challenge their appointments, claiming that no federal court judge can remain in his administrative post after reaching 66 years and 6 months of age. The Malay rulers are in the best position to protect the interests of the people from being hit by waves of power struggle that is threatening the unity of the country. The Sultan of Perak, Sultan Nazri Muizuddin Shah, said the royal institution was a continuation of tradition in maintaining the nation's identity, a symbol of sovereignty, which is the crown of the nation. Berkat naungan raja-raja Melayu, semoga warga dapat dididik, menapis yang keruk menjadi jernih, membuang yang bengkok, mengambil yang lurus. Speaking at a convention in Putrajaya yesterday, Sultan Nazrin also said that it was the ruler who's to observe, monitor and to have the courage to reprove those running the administration to ensure that they were transparent, sincere, accountable and honest in carrying out their responsibilities. This is to ensure that the overall peace, prosperity and well-being of the nation is maintained. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi has unequivocally denied accusations that he had once planned to topple Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Tun Razak. Speaking at an AMNO delegates meeting in Kedah yesterday, the Deputy Premier reiterated his full support to Dato Sri Najib and stated that certain individuals were trying to create a friction between him and the Prime Minister. Wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi. Selagi saya diberikan kepercayaan untuk membantu yang amat berhormat Presiden Parti yang juga Perdana Menteri Malaysia, saya akan terjemahkan kewalakan, ketaat setiaan dan kerja keras saya untuk yang amat berhormat Datuk Seri Najib Tun Abdul Razak. InsyaAllah. Datuk Seri Dr. Ahmad Zahid was refuting a claim made by former Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad that Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid had met him with a view to replacing Dato Sri Najib as Prime Minister.